Hey everyone, welcome to another What I Eat In A Day video. Today I'm gonna focus on meal prep and also some DIY self-care things. So I'm just gonna take you through an average day. I'm gonna show you what I make for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and share the recipes as well. Everything is gonna be plant-based and vegan, but really delicious, filling, and hopefully cozy as well. And also in this video, I'm gonna show you some little self-care DIYs, some little tricks that I like, and some products that I've been loving that are cruelty-free and vegan. Shout out to Harry's for partnering with me on this video. And if you guys are excited about this cozy what I eat in a day with recipes, then give it a thumbs up and let's get into it. I'm gonna start by showing you how I make my meal prep steel cut oatmeal recipe. You need two cups of water, two cups of soy milk or almond milk, half of a teaspoon of salt, and half of a teaspoon of vanilla. Bring that to a boil, and then once it's boiling, stir in one cup of steel cut oats. It's gonna look like a lot of liquid, and it is, but this is gonna cook for about 20 to 25 minutes on medium high heat, so you're just going to watch it thicken before your eyes. Don't worry, all of that liquid will disappear. In the meantime, I slice up a Granny Smith apple. Please ignore the burn mark on my cutting board. Had a little mishap. Don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's fine, but it was kind of a disaster at the time. Anyway, add the apples in along with half a teaspoon of cinnamon and just stir this. That's all you do. You put everything in a pot and stir. It's super easy, but it does take about 20 to 25 minutes to thicken and kind of soften. So I like to do this on one day and make extra. That way I don't have to spend 20 minutes making breakfast every day. I like to sweeten this naturally with some raisins. It just adds such a nice little pop of sweetness, but I love this recipe because it's balanced. It's not overly sweet. One way that I like to make this super meal prep friendly is I will even out the top with a spatula and then score it. And that way in the morning, it's really easy to find the portion that I need. So for breakfast on this day, all I did was scoop out one portion of the meal prepped oats. They will thicken up and be a little bit hard, but don't freak out, that's normal. We're gonna add in another three tablespoons of water or plant milk and then just microwave this or warm it up on the stove. This is great because it kind of steams the oats and it makes them really soft and fluffy again. And you can make it as thin or as thick as you like, but I like it pretty thick. And then I will add a nice splash of some cold soy or almond milk on top or around the sides as it were. And I love topping warm oats with some kind of creamy nut or seed butter. On this day, I went for tahini because I love the flavor. I love that like bitter, nutty, salty, creamy, velvety. It is just so good, especially on apple cinnamon oats. I also had a cup of coffee with soy milk and an orange alongside my oatmeal. And this breakfast was so good, so filling, so flavorful, and only took two minutes because I meal prepped. The recipe will be down below. I watched a Rachel Talbot video a couple years ago and she was talking about how whenever she knows she wants to have kind of like a self-care pamper day, she will clean her bathroom before the evening time. That way it's not like, oh, you have to clean your bathroom and then do all your self-care stuff and, and somehow you're gonna be relaxed after doing all of that. Like that's just way too much. So earlier in the day, while she's kind of doing other things, she'll pick up the bathroom, she'll bring in clean towels and she'll just kind of get the space nice and ready so that at the end of the day, when she's actually ready to unwind and do some self-care, the space is nice and clean and relaxing. While I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and replace my razor head so that when I'm in the bath or shower, I don't have to get out and do that. I don't always remember that. And to replace the head, I'm just gonna do this. And I pull it out and it's great because I don't have to touch it. I don't have to, you know, my fingers don't come in contact with the blade itself. It's super easy. And then now this is ready to go and put back in my shower. This is my Harry's razor and I've been using it for about four or five months. And I really, really notice a difference in how smooth my skin is. I used to have a lot of irritation on my lower leg, like on my calf area. It would just get really dry and irritated. And I noticed a really big difference from using this razor for a while now because I feel like I get a really clean, smooth, shave but without the irritation and I really think that's because the blades themselves are just nicely made they're super sharp and they're affordable like so much bang for your buck and I also really like that the handle is weighted so it feels really secure in your hand and it has this kind of like textured rubber grip 
that just makes it like very, very comfortable and easy to use. And it also just kind of feels like a little high end because it's weighted and it just feels like sturdy. Perry's is a personal care brand that is passionate about revolutionizing shaving because shaving items like this can be super, super expensive and they wanted to be able to create a high quality premium product that is affordable. If you wanna get one of these trial kits, then use the link in the description box below and you will get that for $3. Think about how much money you spend on your razor, whatever razor that you have right now. I highly doubt that it is only $3. It is such a good deal and they believe in these blades so much that they offer a 100% money back guarantee. Plus 1% of their profits are donated to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health resources for veterans and LGBTQ plus youth in need, which I think is awesome. So I really, really love it. So if you're looking for a good razor, click the link in the description box below. I've been making a version of this sugar scrub since I was about 10 years old. I had a book from The Body Shop and it was all about natural home remedies and this is the one that I just love and I use all the time. I basically take about a cup of sugar and then I do two to three teaspoons of olive oil or coconut oil. Sometimes that's just it, but if I wanna make it smell nice, I'll add some essential oil. On this day, I did lime, which is really refreshing, but you can do lavender or you could do a squeeze of fresh orange juice. You could add some vanilla. You can really customize it, but you just want it to be a nice thick consistency. You don't want to add too much oil. So I set that aside and a little while later, I was ready for lunch and this was really quick and easy. I just threw together some mixed greens and instead of chopping them up, I just used some clean kitchen scissors. This is one of my favorite ways to make a quick chopped salad. You can kind of just chop it directly in the bowl with the scissors. And then I added some nice juicy, briny, salty, savory, tangy flavor with a little bit of sauerkraut. And then I had dill in the fridge, so I used that. I love throwing fresh herbs into salad. It really makes a big difference. Some avocado for creaminess and healthy fats. And then I added some fiber and some protein with this mix from Trader Joe's. It's basically lentils and chickpeas already cooked. This definitely has a kick to it from the red chili peppers, but it also has that peppery, spicy freshness that ginger gives to dressings. And that plus the you know freshness from the cilantro and the tang from the lime and the creaminess from the cashews, it's definitely amazing. I love it, I recommend it, but it is spicy. And I actually prefer it as a condiment on sandwiches or to dip potatoes in or to put on veggie burgers rather than a salad dressing, but it's super versatile. This was really delicious, but I was still hungry afterwards, so I had a few more potatoes, the, left, the rest of them basically, with some ketchup. Let me know if you guys can relate to this, but I realized recently that there are times, kind of like with meal prepping, where I would wanna have a pamper session or a pamper evening. I loved the idea of that. I love the idea of unwinding from the week and kind of refreshing and rejuvenating for the week ahead. But when I would plan these types of pamper evenings for the evening time, a lot of times I felt too tired by the end of the day and I would just put it off and put it off and put it off. But what I found is that if I can, every once in a while, have a afternoon pamper session instead I actually have the energy to take a bath and exfoliate and shave and all of that kind of stuff I don't do everything all at once I don't do that and then also do a manicure and my eyebrows and whatever else you know it's like I really keep it simple that makes it a lot more doable for me but on top of it just bumping it up to earlier in the day. I've even done like morning baths on the weekend sometimes and it feels like such a treat, but it really does make a big difference when I'm able to kind of fit these things in, in a way that fits my schedule realistically. So on this day, I took a bath, I exfoliated, I shaved, and then I put some deep conditioner in my hair and I moisturized with body lotion and then I sealed in that moisturizer with a little bit of jojoba oil and I kind of massaged my skin as well just as an extra little pampering treat and then whatever was left over I kind of massaged into my hands and cuticles I also paid extra attention to my wrists which sometimes get a little bit tender and sore and that part of your thumb between the you know between like your thumb and your index finger yeah that feels really good too 
Then after that, I put on a cotton tank top because I didn't want to get anything oily while it was kind of soaking in. It soaks in pretty quickly, but I like to put on something cotton and a comfy robe. And then one of my favorite things to do on a self-care afternoon is have a little snack and watch some TV. It's such a classic way to treat yourself and everybody loves it, but this snack was particularly delicious. This is a pizza flavored puff, so kind of like hippies. I would say the texture is a little bit different. They're thinner and maybe a little bit crunchier, but same idea. And this was pizza party flavor, so it was really good. There's also the same brand does a like a vegan pork rind, but it's like a barbecue flavor. If you see that one, I definitely recommend it. It's really good. So I watched some YouTube videos, just funny, light, you know, kind of escapism type of stuff. And I had my snack. I was all cozy on the couch while my oils, you know, kind of soaked into my skin and my hair was drying. I let it air dry and I watched some Netflix and this was so nice. And it felt like such a treat because it was the middle of the afternoon. But, you know, I really think moments like this are good for the soul. Hey guys, so it is a while later now. Full disclosure, I do have a little bit of face makeup on. I normally wouldn't do that after a bath, but I had some uh, Zoom stuff to do, so I wanted to just have a little bit of a base on, but I'm gonna wash my face later and braid my hair before bed because if you watched my hair care routine video you know that one of the ways that i like to style my hair without heat is just to do french braided um like two french braids before bed it just makes it so much easier in the morning and i don't have to use heat and i don't have to really do anything to my hair except take it out of the braids and shake it around a little bit so that is what I'm gonna do later, but now I'm gonna make some dinner. I meal prepped some beet and walnut burgers and I'm gonna show you step by step how I do that because I really love this recipe. They are so flavorful and I really made sure that this recipe kind of layers in flavors in a way that is really satisfying, but all plant-based and super easy to make. So I made a batch of those last night and I'll show you how I did it and then we'll put dinner together because I'm really excited about that. Okay, so this is a condensed version of a video that I have on my channel, which I will link below, but this is kind of the Cliff's Notes version of the recipe so you can see how I did it. I'm basically gonna start with some grated beets. You can also do this in a food processor if you want, just to save time, but grating is also really easy. And to be honest, I don't use the gloves anymore. It doesn't really make a big difference. I just wash my hands afterwards. You're gonna saute three cups of beets in a big frying pan along with some salt. I do about a quarter of a teaspoon to start and then one large garlic clove and a teaspoon each of ground cumin and smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is key for this. And we're gonna saute this to draw out any moisture in the beets so we have a really nice texture in the finished burger. And then once that cools a little bit, I'll go ahead and add it to a bowl with breadcrumbs, lentils, and some walnuts. I go ahead and I chop up the walnuts in a food processor or chop them up by hand really, really finely. Now the secret ingredients, we're gonna build basically savory, umami, rich, meaty flavors with some miso, some tomato paste, and some of that sauce that I don't know how to say. I do when I'm not doing a voiceover and then once I'm recording myself, I get nervous. So you know which sauce, it's in the description box. The Worcestershire, oh crap. Okay, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and add some cornstarch to bind everything together, some fresh herbs to freshen it up, and some salt and pepper. And look how meat-like that looks, isn't that crazy? But one of the tricks here is that we're gonna take a third of the mixture and we're gonna put this back in the food processor so it becomes like a paste. And this is gonna to help to bind everything together since we're not gonna be using an egg or anything like that to bind our mixture. Look at that, beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and pan fry these and they get nice and crispy that way and then I finish them in the oven. You can also just bake them if you want. There's multiple different ways that you can do this and it's all written out in great detail in the description box below in the recipe that you'll find there. And that way if you wanna make this at home, you'll have all of the information, all of the measurements and any kind of substitutions and stuff, it's all in the post. So definitely check that out. So like I said, I went ahead and I prepped those last night. So all I had to do tonight was assemble my burger. So I went ahead and I started with these Dave Killer Breads hamburger buns. These are really good. I love that they're organic and they actually have six grams of protein each, which is pretty cool. And while I was assembling this, I had some asparagus in the oven. 
and I love making asparagus, but it's usually pretty expensive, so I don't do it too often, but it was on sale, so I wanted to show you how I prepare it. Basically, I just hold each end of the stalk and I find where it kind of naturally wants to snap, and that's where you get the, the kind of woody, tough part off. It just naturally kind of snaps off. So once I do that, I will put it onto a baking sheet along with some olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic. All the measurements are in the description box below. And before I put it into the oven, I'm actually also gonna add a garlic clove. This is a really big garlic clove, but that way it will have time to roast since the oven is already on, and then I can use it to make hummus tomorrow, which will be super handy. I like using roasted garlic instead of raw garlic and hummus because it's just a little bit more mild, but I never feel like turning on the oven just to do that. So if I already have it on, I'll throw in a garlic clove or two and that way I have it on hand. And there really is something about roasting asparagus that just intensifies the flavor and makes it so, so delicious. So if you haven't tried this simple recipe, I highly recommend it. It is such an easy side dish and you can do the exact same thing with green beans, by the way. thinking about what I want the overall message of this video to be and I think it's the idea that sometimes preparation whether it's meal prepping or doing little things throughout your day to kind of set yourself up for success or even resting can be a way of taking care of future you and that's kind of how I think about it as cheesy as I know that that sounds I think that when I make myself extra oatmeal for the next few days because that's all meal prepping is it's just making extra so that future you is taken care of so when I make myself extra oatmeal so that I can have easier mornings that are still healthy and nutritious and taste really good and that will make me feel good and make me happy that makes me feel taken care of and same thing with making sure that I'm taking breaks and making sure that I'm doing fun things that make me happy like eating a delicious snack while I'm watching YouTube videos on the couch. I even think of that as a way of taking care of future me because I know that taking breaks can really replenish your energy stores, make you feel more creative, and it's not always the easiest thing to do. And I think that it's because we think that if we're gonna meal prep or we're gonna do self-care or whatever it is, you have to set aside time and that makes it feel like something else you have to schedule. It's yet another task you should do or that you have to do in order to be healthy. And I think that makes it stressful. That totally defeats the purpose. So instead of setting aside time, like a whole day to meal prep, what I like to do is sometimes make my oats at dinner time when I'm cooking dinner since I'm already cooking it's really easy for me to go ahead and throw everything into a pot and kind of stir it passively while I'm cooking something else and that way when dinner's ready and I'm cleaning up I just put the oats in the refrigerator and for the next couple of days I have breakfast ready to go and I didn't take a whole meal prepping day if that makes sense and same thing with self-care i think that it's really fun to watch these pamper videos on youtube but for the most part i just kind of squeeze it in where i can and i do a few things here and there so maybe one day i'll do a hair treatment or maybe one day i'll really exfoliate my body like i did today with that sugar scrub and i'll shave and i'll really moisturize and i'll focus on just my skin that day or maybe i'll do well i don't really do my nails since the pandemic but i'll you know maybe i'll do my toes or I'll buff my nails or whatever and that's it like that feels good enough and then future me feels really taken care of you know I wake up and my skin is really soft or my nails look really nice and neat and I just feel like things are a little bit more organized and I was gonna say that things feel like they're kind of okay there's something that makes you feel really taken care of when you look out for future you so I hope that that is what you guys got from this video. I hope you enjoy the recipes that I shared in this video as well. And I hope that more than anything, you'll just know that whatever it is that makes you feel good, it is important to do that. You do deserve it. And it's it's more than an indulgence. It's something that is, is good for the soul and can make you feel really happy. So I hope that you will take some time to do that, whatever it is. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And thank you again to Harry's for partnering with me on this video. The link again is in the description box below so you can check that out and I will see you guys in a video very soon. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.